Amazon Prime Day is in full swing. It is a two-day shopping spree this year, but not all the deals are worth it. Andy Taylor has how you can get the most bang for your buck with or without a Prime membership. There's still plenty of time left to shop Amazon Prime Day to take advantage of amazing deals on all sorts of items. Amazon loves to highlight its own stuff. But, um, you know, you'll see the, the typical consumer electronics, phone cases, air fryers, robotic vacuums, um, and, you know, and some TVs and laptops thrown in as well. Whether you're a Prime member or not, Bree Fowler with Consumer Reports says today and tomorrow are great times to shop for electronics online at all the big box retail stores. These are some of the lowest prices, uh, especially on big ticket items that we've seen since Black Friday. Obviously, Prime Day is for Amazon members or test members but stores like Best Buy Walmart and Target will also be offering amazing deals to compete for online sales Target even created deal days offering thousands of deals online with free two-day shipping if you spend $35 or more but with so many places to shop for deals how do you ensure you're getting the best offer you want to definitely do some price comparisons and figure out if it actually is a good deal thanks to web browsers like camel 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 Price comparing has never been made easier. The latest one by Capital One is called Wikibuy. It automatically makes an online search for any product you are currently viewing and looks for a better price. And you also need to think before you buy because even the cheapest item isn't a good deal if it's not actually something you need. But remember, if you do want to get in on the Prime Day action, you don't have to be an Amazon Prime member. You can sign up for a free trial just to take advantage of the deals. I'm Annie Taylor reporting. That is really good information to have, Annie. Thank you. And take a look at this video. These puppies, they are really cute, but they are training for a huge job. They're being bred to be service dogs. Tomorrow here on The Now, we're going to take you inside the rehab center that's getting them ready to help disabled veterans. Rain chances will increase tonight, I think be most widespread during the day tomorrow. Notice we don't cool off. Now because of the clouds and rain around tomorrow, some of the rain heavy, only 84 for the high. Once the rain starts to come to an end, Wednesday afternoon will hit 88 and then off to the races. 92 Thursday and temperatures will be even warmer as we go to the weekend. That's all for the Now Indy. The news at 6 starts right now. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. A mother and her two young daughters killed in a horrific crash on I-465. I'm Stephanie Wade with the urgent message from state police tonight. Super Bowls to Final Fours, Indianapolis has hosted it all. I'm Cameron Wilson out on RTV6. We'll show you the new event possibly coming to Indianapolis. And many IMPD officers will be getting a new piece of equipment to add to their uniforms this week. Good evening to you here at 6 o'clock. We begin tonight with new information about a deadly multi-vehicle crash that took the lives of a mother and her two young daughters and injured seven others. It happened Sunday afternoon on I-465 near Keystone, and tonight we're learning more about the semi-driver who was arrested and if road construction had anything to do with that crash. RTV 6's Stephanie Wade leads our team coverage tonight. She joins us live near the interstate with the latest. Stephanie. The semi-truck driver was just going too fast. Indiana State Police say likely causing the crash where a 29-year-old woman and her two 18-month-old twin daughters were killed. As several construction projects are now underway along the interstate, this serves as a horrific reminder to slow down, especially in construction zones. You know, it's real unfortunate, and what I see every day is, is uh, examples of selfish driving. People are only worried about themselves getting to their destination, and, and unfortunately, that makes it unsafe for other people on the road. Police have now confirmed Bruce Pollard was behind the wheel of a semi-truck when he allegedly barreled into stopped traffic along I-465 near Keystone Avenue. First, hitting a car with 29-year-old Alana Norman Coons of Indianapolis and her 18-month-old twin daughters inside. All three died on the scene. 
Right now, preliminarily, we think that this driver was just going too fast. Um, maybe lack of attention, something happened, uh, causing him to run into the back of that traffic at a very high rate of speed. That set off a chain reaction, hitting six other cars as well. Of those, two people were critically injured and six others were sent to the hospital. Pollard has been preliminarily charged with reckless homicide and criminal recklessness, causing injury. All this while several construction projects are underway on the interstates. Five projects happening right now. Is that typical? Um, no, this is the most we've had in Marion County in a long time. Parts of I-65 are closed now and other lane restrictions for road repaving and bridge repairs. And there were lane restrictions on the north side near this crash. Did the rain delay some of those projects? Yeah, so we had some rain, rain delays. INDOT says although they've gotten a late start on some of these projects, they want to get this work done before winter time. As soon as you start seeing those orange signs, the barrels, the flashing lights, uh, message boards, whatever it may be, you need to heighten your attention. You need to be prepared for lane shifts, for congested traffic, lane closures, shoulder closures, emergency vehicles, the list goes on and on. Now, since this crash happened on Sunday afternoon, two other people have been killed in crashes also along the interstate. One car ran off the road and hit a concrete wall on I-70 near the North Split. That was also at a construction zone. And earlier this morning, someone on a motorcycle died along I-65 near Lafayette Road. And police believe alcohol was involved there. For now, reporting live tonight, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Stephanie, thank you. Our Call 6 Investigates team has learned the trucking company involved in Sunday crash has been cited previously for unsafe driving. rtv 6s Kara Kenny has been digging into inspection records of Weston Transportation as well as the driver's history. She continues our team coverage tonight. Kara. Court records show the truck driver Bruce Pollard of Missouri received a ticket last summer in Terre Haute for failing to move over for an emergency vehicle. The 57 year old paid a $140 fine and court costs. This mugshot is from Pollard's arrest following Sunday's crash on preliminary charges of reckless homicide and criminal recklessness. The trucking company is Weston Transportation out of North Kansas City, Missouri. Records show they've been cited 20 times in the last two years for unsafe driving, including following too close, speeding and lane restriction violations. In 2017, Weston Transportation was cited for making a false report about a driver's record of duty status. That's an hours of service compliance violation, a regulation meant to keep hire drivers off the road. Weston Transportation has 23 vehicles and 20 drivers. Now it's common for trucking companies to have violations and this company has not received any critical violations in the last two years. They're also in satisfactory standing with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Now we also ran the Missouri license plate number for the truck involved in Sunday's crash. Records show in March 2018 that truck received a violation for following two close. And in July 2018, the same truck received a driver fitness violation, which typically involves not meeting proper requirements to operate a commercial motor vehicle. What we don't know is if Bruce Pollard was driving during those 2018 violations or if it was someone else at Weston Transportation. Now, Pollard is in jail tonight. The prosecutor is considering whether or not to file formal criminal charges. We called and emailed the trucking company today about their safety record, but they told us no comment. Wow, it's such a treasure trove of information we saw there this evening. Absolutely. Is this something you can look up with any trucking company? Yes, you can. If you're interested in a particular trucking company, you can go to the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration website, put in their name or their USDOT number. You can get a whole bunch of information, including two years of inspection reports, right down to the license plate number if you want it. Which helps. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Our, our Kara Kenny digging into it for us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. Well, now to your Storm Team 6 forecast. Hot and humid out there today, but the rain chances are increasing as we speak. And many places could use the rain. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is tracking that for us tonight. Kevin. And I do think we'll have widespread rain over the next 36 hours. Most of us will at least get a downpour. How much in any one spot still up in the air? But, for example, Cincinnati's had up to three inches of rain today. The clouds have arrived. That's the first notice that Barry is starting to influence Indiana. 
keeping temperatures down in the southern half of the state. We've got some thunderstorms in southeast Indiana, south of Connorsville, west of Brookville Reservoir, and then other thunderstorms will lift north of the Ohio River. This is setting the stage for more widespread rain that really comes tomorrow. I'll mention a low or marginal risk for any severe storms tonight south of Bloomfield and Bedford. The same will be true tomorrow. Whenever you have these tropical systems that come through, already some spin in the atmosphere, which makes it a little more likely that you have to watch for severe weather. 90 in Terre Haute, while it's 78 in Bloomington, more clouds and some showers recently in Bloomington, and you can see where the pocket of rain sits because of the cooler temperatures. This evening, isolated thunderstorm, most of us will stay dry, 77 by 11 o'clock tonight. Tomorrow, it's about rain and thunderstorms, periods of rain, not everyone will see rain all day long, certainly. Peak hours in the afternoon into the early evening. Mark. Kevin, thank you. Starting this week, Indianapolis Metro Police officers will begin using body cameras on a trial basis. All officers and supervisors on Northeast and Southeast District middle shifts will be equipped with body cams for a 45-day trial period. Now, this is the busiest shift within the largest districts. As part of the process to determine if this is something that is feasible for the city, IMPD anticipates full deployment of body cams may cost between two and three million dollars the technology is being piloted at no cost to the city. Football season is almost here, and the city of Indianapolis is trying to land another massive NFL event. RTV6's Cameron Riddle joins us with details on the city's new push and the potential impact the NFL draft could have on central Indiana. Uh, good evening. Indianapolis is known for being a sports and tourism destination, but now the city wants to go to a new level, hosting the NFL draft. The Visit Indy Tourism Agency, along with Mayor Joe Hogsett, the Indiana Sports Corporation, and the Indianapolis Colts are seriously considering submitting a bid for the NFL Draft as soon as 2024. By then, the infrastructure of Indianapolis will have grown. Between now and then, 2,000 new hotel rooms will be built, including the 38-story Hilton Hotel slated to be built at Pan Am Plaza. The much-anticipated red line will have long been completed with the blue and purple rapid transit lines expected to be completed by 2022. Chris Gall with Visit Indy says those new additions are attractions the city believes will catch the attention of the NFL. As you look towards the, the all-star game and the college football playoff, we know we don't need those pieces to, to host those successfully. However, they would be needed to, to uh, retain the combine and attract the draft. Indianapolis will have a full schedule of events to host over the next few years, including the NBA All-Star Game and the NCAA Men's Final Four in 2021, as well as the college football playoff in 2022. This year's draft was hosted in Nashville and brought an estimated 600,000 fans to the city. Visit Indy says Central Indiana can top that. Downtown, I'm Cameron Ruddle, RTV6. Thanks, Cameron. And the possibility of hosting the draft is still in the planning stages, but would be ready for presentation to the NFL by the fall. The 49th Indiana Black Expo summer celebration is off and running. And this morning's annual Mayor's Breakfast focused on building diversity in businesses serving central Indiana. Mayor Joe Hogsett stressed the importance for the label, labor forces at companies across Indianapolis to reflect the demographics of our community. He said it is key for the economic growth and prosperity of the city. This year's Mayor's Breakfast also featured panelists from Cummins, the Indianapolis Airport Authority, One America, and the Department of Workforce Development. They focused on ways each entity is building diverse staffs with a wide range of backgrounds, experiences, and ideas. The Mayor's Breakfast helps kick off the Indiana Black Expo Business Conference. The business conference has always been designed in order to build capacity for small and minority businesses. So we actually have a lot of workshops um, that are designed not only to build that capacity, but also a lot of professional development workshops for folks who are in corporate America as well. Amanda and I were proud to serve as MCs for this morning's Mayor's Breakfast. Of course, the Indiana Black Expo Summer Celebration has informational, health, economic, and entertainment events all week at venues in and around the Indiana Convention Center. To see a list, use the RTV6 app or the IndyChannel.com. Still to come on RTV6 News at 6, how RTV6 helps get relief for a woman and her son struggling with a broken air conditioner. Plus, are you ready to swim with the sharks? We will introduce you to one woman who cannot wait to make her pitch to Shark Tank in hopes of taking the next step with her business. 
The Indians are back home tonight as they take on the Syracuse Mets, and the fans showed up here early to see one player in particular. For the visitors, Tim Tebow's tour of AAA comes to Indy. We'll have that live for Victory Field when the news at 6 continues. You can't fake steak. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. RTV6 is working for you and getting results. Earlier this month, we told you about an east side woman whose air conditioner wasn't working, leaving her asthmatic son to suffer from breathing problems during the 90 degree heat. Well, she says that she made several calls to the management of the Greenway apartment complex, but says nothing was done to fix the problem. Well, this weekend, that woman called RTV6 to say that after our story aired highlighting the AC problem, the complex finally came and gave her a temporary AC window unit until her central air is fixed. Our Hiring Hoosiers commitment strives to help you reach your career potential and provide examples of success along the way. A hobby and a friendship turned into a successful business for two Hoosier entrepreneurs, and it continues to grow. One year ago, I introduced you to Circle City Kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea. The soda alternative is filled with probiotics and a little and little to zero sugar. Co-founders Skylar Williams and Matt Whiteside say in the past year they switched from glasses to cans, moved to a new downtown facility eight times the space they were in, hired a much larger staff, and changed their name to Circle. They say their massive growth is in part due to the support of Indy's community and resources. The biggest thing is the support system in Indy for people that are starting businesses is uh, very unique. And the sheer outpouring of mentorship and guidance, technical knowledge, uh, just things that are provided to you in Indianapolis, it, it really doesn't match up anywhere else. The guys at Circle say their new facility should be fully operational within a month, along with adding more products outside of kombucha. They also tell me they have a big plan to add a retail space and possibly a tasting room. Learn more about Circle and where you can connect with them and buy their drinks at HiringHoosiers.com. Another local entrepreneur is getting ready to give it her all tomorrow as she auditions for the producers of ABC's Shark Tank at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Darla Hall from Noblesville owns a company called Witty Publications. The company creates Creates licensed activity books with sports team themes. Hall has created over 200 books for teams like the Pacers, Colts, and the Dallas Mavericks. Hall says she hopes she is picked from the auditions and makes it to Shark Tank so that she can help expand her product to big corporate brands. At some point, an entrepreneur needs help and needs expansion and needs capital to be able to, to, to do much bigger things. So I have always said, find something that makes your heart beat faster and do more of it. So that's why Shark Tank is important to me, because I really want to do more of it and expand my business. Hall says she's been practicing nonstop getting ready for her audition. She plans on being at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway bright and early. And if you're planning on joining Darla tomorrow at the track to make your pitch to Shark Tank producers at the casting call, here is what you need to know. You can't get on the grounds until 6 a.m. through Gate 2 on 16th Street. The event starts at 9. You'll park in the Media Center gravel lot just to the right of the pagoda. Look for live coverage throughout the day, starting on Good Morning Indiana. And carry an umbrella in case you got to keep that briefcase dry on your way into the presentation. We'll get to the rain in a second. Heat will expand from the Gulf Coast all the way through the Great Lakes, even into southern portions of Canada by the end of the week. Here's some of the headlines. Low to mid-90s for our high temperatures. Factor in the humidity, you're looking at heat index values in the triple digits. Here's our temperature plan. Because of tomorrow's rain and cloud cover, we're the coolest. Wednesday afternoon, rain is ending. We're starting to climb. Temperatures peak as we get to Friday, but we'll hold those peak temperatures in the mid 90s right through Saturday and Sunday. This is what it will feel like on Sunday. Enough cloud cover will back off a little bit on the heat index, but still in the triple digits. That's down the road. This is next. Remnants from tropical storm and Hurricane Barry spinning over northern portions of Arkansas. This will continue to pinwheel moisture and higher humidity levels into the Hoosier State. Lots of rain over Cincinnati in the Hoosier state you get from Brookville Reservoir back to just south of Connorsville a thunderstorm there some general rain from Terre Haute to Bloomington as we go tomorrow into Wednesday that's our greatest 
threat for widespread showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon on through Wednesday morning. Can't rule out an isolated severe storm. 7 a.m. Lafayette to around Greensburg Northeast, the rain. We get a little lull before we see those fire up again during the heat of the day and then by four to seven fairly widespread in any one of these. They don't look like uh, much other than some color here as we show you what the radar should look like tomorrow afternoon, but they could contain one to two inch rainfall amounts per hour where it rains, it will likely pour. As we move beyond temperatures tomorrow afternoon in the low 80s, we'll start to heat things up as we get into the middle of the week, but thunderstorms and cloud cover keep our temperatures down as we go through tomorrow. Wednesday, first half of the day, the best chance for thunderstorms. Second half of the day, we'll start to dry things out. Wednesday morning, showers and thunder showers, and then you see the clearing taking place in the western portion of the state after that. Highs jump into the upper 80s, and as we move beyond Temperatures on Thursday, they'll be in the low 90s. Then the heat is on and consistently in the mid 90s Friday through Sunday and overnight lows as warm as 75 degrees. You'll need to stay in the shade, use the air conditioning, a fan, whatever you've got to stay cool. You've been warned. Thanks, Kevin. Absolutely. Well, baseball returns to Victory Field tonight. The Indians hosting Syracuse. Brad Brown joins us live with a look at one player who's generating a lot of buzz with the visiting team, Brett. Mark and Amanda, that is indeed the case. First of all, it's cooled down about 10 degrees since we got here, so the weather is leveled off. It's a nice night here at Victory Field. The Indians are playing the Syracuse Mets here tonight. All of these fans have showed up. Many of them have been here for the better part of an hour or so. And they're waiting on, well, frankly, they're waiting on one of the visiting players to come in here. Tim Tebow is currently on the Syracuse Mets roster as he continues to work his way through professional baseball and right now is at the AAA level. Let's show you some of the video of his season. Of course, Tebow made his name as a college football star at the University of Florida. Had a stint over the course of three seasons in the NFL. Big playoff win with the Broncos. If you know sports, you kind of know his story. The fact is, is that he's gotten to baseball now and is kind of leveled off here at the AAA level. If he goes beyond on this. Frankly, it'll be a bit of a surprise at this point, but he keeps grinding it out every day and right now making his way through the minor leagues, really just trying to kind of be one of the other guys in the dugout with this Syracuse Mets team. We talked to Tebow earlier and had just kind of the simple question, why baseball? And why keep going? I really do love challenges in a sort of weird way and it's just it's it's fun. I mean, that's an incredible challenge and um, and I, I think that's one of the things I've enjoyed most about baseball is just that process of, of that challenge every day. Um, adjusting to the pitchers. You finally feel like you got one guy, you know, okay, I'm kind of seeing him well. Then they throw in a reliever and you're like, I didn't see him well. And you're constantly that battle and um, in that pursuit. And I really enjoy that. And here's a look at the stats. Again, it's been a struggle for Tebow this season in the span of 71 games, hitting just 161. His batting average is actually up from 144 over the course of the last months. Had a couple of those four home runs here in the last two weeks. 92 strikeouts, though, at 224 bats. That's not a good number in the grand scheme of things. We will see how it goes as this week continues here with a four-game series against the Indians. Indy pitcher Mitch Keller with another award-winning effort last week, the International League Pitcher of the Week. He pitched the first game after the All-Star break on Thursday at Columbus. Six solid innings. Another good showing for Keller. He continues to keep his ERA under three among the lead leaders in strikeouts, and we should see him back here in the span of this series against Syracuse. As for this week, this is the start of a seven-game homestand for the Indians. Starting tonight, the first of four here against the Mets. They'll have three more on Friday, Saturday, Sunday here with Durham Bulls. 135 early game on Wednesday afternoon if you want to catch a little afternoon baseball. Fireworks on Friday night, all of that. Again, uh, be a hot one here for the most part, but good chance to see some midsummer baseball right here at Victory Field. We will have more on all of this coming up for you tonight on the news at 11. We can tell you we'll try and kind of keep it quiet for the fans over here. Tebow's not starting tonight. He's been the designated hitter for the Mets for most of their games in the last stretch here. No DH tonight, so we'll see when he gets in. We'll have more on that. More coming up later on. Back to finish up the news at 6 in the studio after one more time. Make it to breakit.com for details. Welcome back. If you are out doing some back-to-school shopping, we are asking you to pick up a few extra things for the RTV6 back-to-school drive on Thursday. We will be on Monument Circle from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. collecting supplies for kids in need. There is a particular need for spiral notebooks, loose-leaf paper, pens, pencils, and pocket folders. We hope to see you Thursday on Monument Circle. And we've been collecting our own 
right here at RTV6. We'll drop them off just like you. As you can see, the heaviest thunderstorms are just south of Connersville, the upper right-hand corner of your screen. General rain coming into Bloomington, Nashville, Bedford, and eventually Seymour. That's the theme of the next 24 hours. Rain and at times heavy. We want to thank you for choosing RTV6. World News is next. Good night.